I, I, I used to have two things that really gave me energy. The first thing, waking up in the morning, mornings being generous, but waking up for the first time in a day and, uh, and seeing that a, a video had gotten a, a bunch of likes and comments and therefore views. I'll tell you, uh, if, it, if it was unexpected, that's like floating on air. Uh, as opposed to water, I guess it works. Yeah, it's like floating on air. It, it, it's amazing. Uh, the other thing would be <clears throat> a, a really insightful comment. Love it. Just just gives me so much uh, energy. May, you know, I think about it all morning. Wonder if I'm going to work it into the show. Uh, inevitably come up with a grand plan and then fail to follow through with it. But still, it it really does give me energy. Well, now there's a third thing. The third thing is when a member of the Wicked audience goes out there and does something. We've actually had uh, uh, members of the audience say, well, yeah, I did what you said. I did what the, what the plan was. I sent the email. I, uh, I contacted the person. Uh, it's, it almost doesn't feel real to me. I love that so much. And then to have somebody take it a step further, and write a full article over on Medium. So it's a blogging spot. Well, Wicked Foxy Dragon wrote a uh, just a, a, a grand slam of an article because it, it touches on the very thing that we're all about here. What you can do. And she wrote it on gun control. If you were here on Salty Saturday, you, you saw a little bit of the article. I'll tell you where we stopped, and that was the very moment I decided to use that article again today. Two reasons. Number one, it, it, it deserves. She did, she did fine enough work that it, it deserves to be shown twice. And number two, Wicked Foxy Dragon, you did my work for me. I'm not going to pass up. A free segment where someone's already come up with what you can do. I'm not going to do work that I don't have to. It's done already. So our first segment today is brought to you by none other than Wicked Foxy Dragon. We're going to look at her article and to give us context, we are first going to listen to what Mr. Ali Velshi over on MSNBC has to say. Here he is. We were so close. There we go. You ever been to Japan? Visiting Japan for the first time would probably be a culture shock for most Americans. The food, the language, the currency, and young children walking to school, running errands, and taking the subway on their own. It is common in Tokyo to see small children as young as five or six years old traipsing along the streets with their mini backpacks and their oversized hats, either alone or in a group of other young children. They are trained by their parents at a young age to safely cross roads, to learn the transportation systems, and to identify places to go if they're ever in trouble. This is the norm in Japan because it's consistently ranked one of the safest countries in the world and because Japan places widespread trust in its own society. A 2016 article in The Wire says, quote, schools also distribute a special yellow patch to first graders that they wear on their uniforms, which identifies them as newbies to the art of navigating in the city. Adults keep a special eye out for these patch wearers. Retirees sometimes volunteer to usher children across roads safely while they go to school. Households can also volunteer to display signs outside their homes indicating their willingness to provide refuge to any child in distress. In Japan, there's a collective agreement to keep children safe at all costs. I just wanted to chime in to say, when I imagine someone sneaking across the border to get into the United States. I imagine that they are picturing a country like that, that they're going to all that trouble to sneak into, a country where you don't have to worry about your kid's safety. Not this one. 
but I'm glad to hear that such countries do exist. Not so in America. Last week in the United States, three children and three school employees were killed in the country's 38th mass shooting in the month of March. That's according to the gun violence archive. Six people are dead after a shooter entered the Covenant School in Nashville, Tennessee, with a military-style AR-15 rifle and began shooting indiscriminately. On the day of the shooting, the First Lady, Jill Biden, a lifelong educator, had this to say. I am truly without words. And our children deserve better. Our children deserve better. A few days earlier, before the shooting in Nashville, Republican Congressman John Joyce of Pennsylvania had a similar hope for America's children. Our students deserve better. Uh, their statements are the same, but the meaning behind their words couldn't be more different because Congressman Joyce was talking about protecting the nation's children, not from guns, but from plant-based milk. He added, quote, we cannot allow almonds or soy to be passed off as dairy. The outrage. Here's a little more of his speech. Bones, muscle, brain, and vital organs all rely on products like whole milk for healthy development. When the bullets from an AR-15 rip through a child, their bones, muscle, brain, and vital organs are eviscerated. There's virtually no chance for survival, let alone healthy development. Thank you. I would love for you guys to share this segment. Not, not this one I'm doing on this channel. Well, hell, I'd love that. But, but Ali Velshi's segment. Or Wicked Foxy Dragon's article. Both are extremely well put. And I, I would love, and, and by the way, they both address the same cause of the problem. The cause of the problem is Republicans. They have made the determination that there are things in this country which are more important than the lives of school children. I am talking on just a, a tribal level. I'm talking about even more basic than that. When we were apes that were just getting used to toddling on the ground, when we were inventing the atlatl to help us throw spears 5,000 years ago, when we were doing that, even then, we knew that a decent society prioritizes the safety of its children. In fact, you don't even need a society. You want to get in danger with a mother bear, what do you do? Threaten its kid. You want to get uh, attacked by an alley cat, what do you do? Threaten its kittens. Every group on earth, including the non-human ones, seem to be more humane than Republicans. And I would love for you to ask the Republicans in your life how it is, the Republican voters in, in your life, how it is they possibly put anything, any single thing they think they are gaining above the lives of school children. Because there's, there's no damn reason to. Beware those who will... Tr I just saw you, Foxy. It is quiet. It's a Monday. It'll tend to happen. But I'm thinking the VOD is going to do very well. Let's hope. Because I really do want... Anything, for God's sake, anything to change in this country on this issue. Try to convince you that the safety of children is their number one priority. They are banning books. They're banning lessons on race. They're banning health care for trans children. They're blaming video games. They're blaming drag shows. They're banning sex education. And they're banning almond milk. Excuse right. me, almond beverage. 
They're banning Michelangelo's anatomically correct statue of Davis, David all in the name of protecting the kids. But none of these things, including seeing the statue of David's stone penis, actually puts a child's life at risk of danger. You know what does? The military-style lethal weapons that are legally purchased by people who wish to inflict harm on other people. Look at this video. Look at these children fleeing their elementary school, running for their lives. These children are not fleeing books or statues or stories of black history. They are trying to outrun bullets from an AR-15 rifle, an impossible task for six people who never made it out of that school alive. I hope to one day look back at assault weapons the same way we look at drunk driving or smoking on airplanes. Today, it seems implausible that those things were once societally acceptable, but there was a time when you could drink a pack of beer and get behind the wheel of a car or light up a cigarette in a restaurant or in an airplane. Many Americans were strongly opposed to criminalizing drunk driving or banning cigarettes on airplanes, but now it is the norm. My hope is that one day we look back and say, wow, remember those times when anyone could just buy an AR-15? That was crazy. But in order for that to happen, our lawmakers need to act, and the Republican Party needs to drop the selective outrage and come to the collective agreement to keep children safe at all costs. No notes for Mr. Velshi. None. So look, we need to be forcing our representatives to talk about this at a rate which reflects how much we care about it. We need to be insisting that at every opportunity they can, they put forward bills to deal with this. There's a number of ways they can do that, including trying to force amendments into existing bills that deal with this stuff. Through the work, and don't be too flattered, Foxy, because now, now i got to show the ugly side. Through the work that's already been done by Wicked Foxy Dragon, we're going to look at some some of the reasonable reforms that can be suggested, suggested suggested to these representatives. Your goal at home will be to write your representative. And what the hell? Copy and paste Foxy suggestions if you want. Or if you have one that's uh that you think is there it's a it's a got a great chance. Just use that one. If you have your own that you think would work, great. Suggest that, but make sure that your representative, whoever it is, your representative, is talking about it at every available opportunity and tell them you want that. And if scumbags in Congress are going to vote against it, make them. Don't fail. To put it forward just because they will say no. Make them say no on the on the record. Oi. Here's the article we were talking about. I want to read one paragraph and highlight something. As with Jill Biden. Foxy says, something must be done. Our children deserve better. Yes, they do. People need to wake up and see the whole picture and not just tunnel vision. There is something that can be done. In fact, there is a lot of something that can be done. It just takes a little uncommon sense. Here's what she listed before. Highlighting all of it. Background checks. That one's a layup. Mandatory background checks. We could make that a federal rule for the purchase of firearms. A background check. Stopping gun sellers from selling guns designed for war to average citizens. In other words, that would mean banning military-style 
assault weapons. It's bizarre to me that this is even a matter of debate, but let's plug on. A concerned family member might report their concerns and stop one unstable person from buying a gun and killing a classroom of kids. Yes, make reporting easier. Training gun owners instead of letting anyone over 18 purchase a gun. Yeah. Uh, This is less talked about. But it's a common occurrence. Foolishness with firearms kills people. Every year. There are a ton of people in this country that treat guns like toys. It should be no different. Huh. At the very least, it should be no different than having a car. If you need to be licensed to drive a car, you should need to be licensed to own a gun. You should have to demonstrate to a professional that you can be responsible with this incredibly destructive machine. We wouldn't let anybody have a uh, large hadron collider. I don't know. That was that's the only big destructive machine I could think of. But we would a, a semi truck. We wouldn't let anybody just have a semi truck without a license, without some training. It's no different with a gun, for God's sake. And of course, if gun owners can be held responsible for any crime committed with a gun they own, even if they had nothing to do with the crime or even know about it, I'm guessing gun owners would be a little more careful with how many people have access to their guns. Guess what? So many crimes are committed with borrowed guns. Not stolen, but borrowed guns. I cannot fathom how this is not already a law. It's true, it's not already a law. But I can't fathom how this happened. If somebody... If you are so casual with loaning out a device which fires bullets that you give it to somebody who then turns around and uses it for a crime, I just can't see how you're not also culpable, responsible in some way. I hope that's the right term. Uh, legally responsible. You gotta be. That's, that's gotta be what? Reckless endangerment? In other words, uh, at, at, at a minimum, I would want to see A, everybody need to be licensed to carry a gun, and then B, making it illegal to loan your gun to somebody who is not licensed. Or frankly, I don't know, I wonder if even loaning a gun at all should be allowed. Certainly, if you stored it in such a way that your kid could get a hold of it, was physically capable of getting hold of it, that to me seems like an obvious problem. There's one thing I saw in this article. I'll go a little earlier. Here's what Foxy says. Now, before you assume I have no idea what I'm talking about, let me just say I am a gun owner. Wow, I almost said that correctly. I am a gun owner and have a CCW permit. I'm not against guns at all, and I believe civilians should have the option to own a gun to protect themselves. I carry a gun with me almost everywhere I go, especially if I have my son with me. All right, so look. The writer of this article is the very person that Democrats, sane Republicans, really just reasonable people are talking about when they say reasonable gun owners. In fact, I would argue most gun owners are like this. It is more of a sign than anything else of how unrepresentative our democracy is. That our children are killed and we do nothing about it. Because most people give a damn. As they should. Be annoying to your representative about this. 
Republicans constantly talk about our right to own guns, but they always forget the part that says, well-regulated, a well-regulated militia. There is nothing in the Constitution that says a civilian has the right to own an AR mother 15. Now consider this. While it is legal for a person to buy a M79, good lord, grenade launcher, <laughs> it would require the buyer to pass an in-depth background check by the Federal Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, wait six months to a year to get an M79, and pay a stiff fee. It would also require another application to the ATF and another long wait to buy live rounds, which would not include grenades, which, for all intents and purposes, are illegal. First of all, Foxy, great job citing this stuff, because that is what I was going to look at. I, I, <coughs> I couldn't believe the M79 thing. <coughs> oh, good Lord. Couldn't believe the M79 thing, but yeah. And that followed a whole rabbit hole of uh, interesting loopholes and gun longs. But anyway... Funniest line, so excuse my language, but few Republicans who say we cannot restrict or regulate guns. It's simply untrue, not to mention unreasonable. I wholeheartedly agree. Folks, check out Foxy's article. It really is, I mean, it's right to the point. It's a whopping six-minute read. Uh, and, and if you want to know every... Every reasonable Jesus, every reasonable objection you could have to this, uh, I feel that that or or to um, excuse me, every every reasonable reform you could make uh, that you could not have a reasonable objection to, I feel that is located in this highlighted section, one through six. Bo of the Fifth Column did a whole video on ways you can secure a school. I think that's interesting. I'm up for that. I recently saw um, a Tennessee, what was it? Um, I think the governor of Tennessee recently saw them getting trashed for suggesting um, securing schools. I'll tell you, I don't get it. Anything. We should be doing anything. Yeah, secure schools. Yeah, put an army of security guards in schools. That's not sufficient, but it's better than what we have now, which is just every single day we roll the dice and hope we don't hear about another massacre of children. We, we really can't just go about our days. There is, there is truly nothing more important to handle. So handle it. Write your representative. Tell him Wicked Foxy Dragon sent you.